Welcome to Luxury Bee's YouTube channel where we can explore all topics related to luxury. For more upcoming videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Like, comment, and share to your friends. The sun's tears have been used to describe it. From significant ancient offerings to the gods, to king's tombs, to your grandpa's crown filling, it has been utilized in everything. That's correct, it's gold, and that fact speaks for itself. Since the dawn of civilization, gold has been highly prized, but why exactly? How is it possible that a shiny pebble the size of your palm is worth the same as a car? We're going to react to that topic today. We'll explore the origin of gold. How was it valued? How uncommon is it really? And how long will this value endure in the present era? For countless ages, gold has retained its great value. 4,000 BC or 6,000 years ago, in Egypt where some monarchs claimed that gold was as easy to find as dirt, gold was already being used in artifacts. Gold was initially incorporated into jewelry 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. Small gold squares known as Sin Yuan were first used as money in 1091 BC. The ancient Persians and Greeks then utilized gold coins. Many ancient Greek philosophers including Plato and Aristotle thought that gold was a thick amalgamation of water and sunlight. Even though their observation that gold appears in flowing water was somewhat accurate, their science was a little off. According to scientists, the explosion of a dying star is where the majority of the gold found on Earth came from. Yes, you're right. The gold tooth in your grandfather's mouth and the gleaming ring in your finger were both produced by a supernova that occurred billion of years ago. Gold particles were incorporated into the cosmic cloud that created the Earth, but they sank to the planet's core at the planet's center. Gold was scattered throughout the ground over time and as fault lines shifted, warm and cool water drove the gold closer to the surface, depositing it in veins. The reason why gold is frequently discovered in flowing streams is because some of those veins surface through erosion and water transports little golden chunks from those veins downstream. Like the gold fakes discovered in the American River by John Sutter in 1848, which sparked the gold rush and drew nearly 300,000 people to the well. In less than 10 years, gold worth $81 million was extracted in the Golden State. The gold standard legislation which was passed in 1990 made gold an asset backed by paper money a few decades later. And only a few decades later, Franklin D. Roosevelt made it against the law for Americans to possess more gold than a tiny quantity in the form of coins or certificates. People were coerced into selling their gold to the US Treasury for $20.67 per troy ounce. And that gold was subsequently kept at Fort Knox in Kentucky. The fixed exchange rate between gold and paper money as well as the regulations governing the private ownership of gold were abolished in 1975 when the golden window was closed. So true, throughout the past 7,000 years, gold has undergone quite a bit. But one crucial aspect has never changed. Gold has always been valued. Why gold though? Pristinely because uh, we say so. <laughs> But we say so for really excellent reasons. First, when it came to discovering something valuable before conventional money, there are 118 elements known to man, but only a small number of them are suitable for usage as a commodity, giving civilizations a variety of alternatives. It goes without saying that none of the gases are acceptable. It would be difficult to carry dangerous radioactive substances like plutonium and uranium in your pocket for use in the neighborhood market. However, if we had taken that path, the zombie apocalypse by now probably would have been quite intriguing. Then there are the more reasonable and well-known elements like titanium, iron, silver, and copper, all of which unexpectedly have less than ideal properties. 
While excellent for encasing leftover pizza, aluminum is far too fragile to be utilized in coins or other artifacts. On the other hand, titanium is just too difficult to use. The only temperature at which it can be melted is 1000 degrees Celsius. And humans in ancient Mesopotamia lacked the technology to achieve that. Lead and iron are both accessible and simple to work with. It would not be as useful as money because, well, it rusts and there is an excessive amount of it. When it comes to value, abundance is a problem. Gold would be about as valuable as the weeds growing next to it if everyone had an acre of it in their front yard. On the other hand, extremely rare and hard to come by metals like platinum are also concerned because they aren't present in sufficient quantities to be used as a medium of exchange between different cultures and communities. This brings us to the topic of silver and gold. Both are malleable which allowed early civilizations to hold the precious metals in anything their hearts desired, even if their hearts demanded something like this. They are both uncommon enough to be valued but not so scarce that obtaining them would have been impossible. Even though gold is malleable, it is also essentially indestructible, hence gold used by the Mesopotamians in ancient times still remains today. Generations will continue to live on the gold we are currently digging. Another reason why gold is so valuable is that people appreciate bright objects. While this explanation may sound less profound, it is actually just as grounded in science. We enjoy glitz, flare, chandeliers dangling from the ceilings of our palaces, and shining bright gold. According to scientists, our biological attraction to water can be connected to our attraction to shiny objects. So the next time you get a new watch or a flashy new car, someone may give you the side eye. Tell them it's all in your DNA and you can't help yourself. As a result, gold is extremely valuable due to four factors. First of all, it's rare. Two, it was simple for our forefathers to use. Third, it's awful. And four, we like the fact that it is glossy. However, there is one area where we need to delve a little bit more deeply. The culture of a place where gold flakes may be found in mixed drinks in a casino in Las Vegas. The scarcity of gold. How rare could it possibly be? The solution is more complex and surprising than you might anticipate. Right now, if you melted down all of the gold in the world, it would create a cube with sides that are are roughly 68 feet long. 47% of the world's gold is in the form of jewelry. Therefore, as a point of comparison, the lovely solid gold cube would easily fit inside of a baseball infield. The remaining percentage, which includes the gold used in technology, building materials, and dental treatment is 39% and is utilized on items like coins and bars. But even then, there are millions of tons of gold that we haven't worked out how to reach. It is estimated that there are at least 20 million tons of gold in the world's oceans. Our supply of gold is growing gradually at an estimated 2% per year. Instead of pounds or tons, think in terms of millions. Those scientists and people looking to make a quick buck have tried to figure out a way to reach that valuable gold, but they haven't quite figured it out just yet, and many believe that they never will. According to Forbes, the amount of gold found in our oceans is likely equal to about $771 trillion. It would be extremely difficult to mine the gold from several veins that are miles below the surface of the ocean. That brings up the following query. What does the gold market's future hold? There are many experts who disagree about the future of gold, but if history is any guide, it appears that gold's worth is secure. According to investment manager Gary Brinson, gold's value has always maintained its value despite short-term negative fluctuations. According to investment manager Gary Brinson, a fine man's suit costs an ounce of gold in Shakespeare's day, as it still does today. If the value of gold over the previous 7,000 years is any guide to its future, with just an ounce of gold, it appears as though we could purchase suits on Mars or the Moon. There you have it then. The background, justification, and potential future of gold. What do you folks think? Does gold truly deserve to be worth so much? Do you also have any? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Please like and share.